I spent over $10,000 on this laptop and my camera quality still looks like this. <laughs> We gotta talk about this because frankly, laptop cameras suck. And in a time where we're increasingly doing much more remote work or having more online meetings than ever before, webcam quality really matters. In this video, we're gonna be taking a look at why exactly laptop cameras suck and also how me and you are partially responsible for this and what we can do to make things look better. Let's get into it. Okay, so this is a problem that kind of supersedes brand or platform. It really doesn't matter whether you're using like a Windows laptop or an Apple laptop. It doesn't matter if you spent like $1,000 on your laptop or $10,000 on your laptop. Even futuristic dual screen laptops or detachable magnetic keyboards don't get a pass. They all look the same or similar at least. Okay, so let's see what actually defines a good image on a regular camera. Now, this is my Sony a7 IV. I'm actually filming on my FX3 right now. This is a full frame camera. And if you take a look at the sensor inside this, you'll notice one thing. It's pretty big and having a bigger sensor, it basically allows your camera to take in much more light, create more shallow depth of field and overall an arguably better looking image. And besides the sensor size, you'll also notice that the size of this camera isn't necessarily big by any means, but it's also not super small either. Now, obviously you're not going to get cinematic level footage from your laptop, but one of the main reasons that the laptop cameras actually look this bad is because there's actually not enough space in order to fit a larger sensor and all of that tech into this really thin screen panel. And that's where me and you kind of come in, like the average consumer. You see, for years now, we've been kind of pushing companies to make smaller bezels and thinner laptops. And unfortunately, one of the downsides to this is crappier cameras. There's just not enough space in something that is this thin to house a larger sensor sensor and the supporting technology for it. I think the closest example that we can look at to laptops is phones. Now these have also had similar pressure to go thinner bodies and shrinking bezels and whatnot. And that's why you'll notice that even though our technology has gotten so advanced when it comes to phones, our phones still do this. Now, pretty much most of the flagship smartphones that we've had over the past five to 10 years have this issue, and it's because their camera lenses actually protrude out of their bodies like this. Now, this is done because they have to house larger camera system. And in order to get better camera quality out of these phones, the lenses start getting bigger and bigger. You can imagine even having this much thickness to play with on the phone, they still need to have these camera lenses sticking out. Now, if we wanted much better cameras, on our laptops, technically we have to start doing the same thing on our laptops and put in protruding lenses and that's not a good look and probably wouldn't work for usage either. So yeah, that's not happening. Okay, so what exactly can we do about this now? Because look, in this increasingly digital world, having a good quality webcam is becoming much more important, almost the equivalent of dress to impress, but digitally. So I'll go into some possible solutions. Now, you'll always have things you can do with your actual webcam, such as, you know, wiping it down, cleaning it, making sure that it doesn't have like fingerprints on it and everything like that. Positioning yourself where there's no harsh lighting kind of behind you or, you know, above you or anything like that. Maybe putting light in front of you to face you and not using it in low light situations. So what are some other things you can do? Now, if you could use a bigger camera, using something like this will give you the best possible video quality. However, it's not really practical because not only is this thing really expensive, but it's also a lot of work to kind of rig up the whole thing. And frankly, with online compression and everything like that, when you're using like Zoom or Google Meet, it just doesn't make sense. The second option is you can use your phone. Now, for example, if you're within the Apple ecosystem, Apple has made it very easy for you to kind of just tap into your phone's camera instead of the actual webcam on your laptop. But I'm not a huge fan of this as well because it really takes away your primary use case device. And a lot of times when you're in meetings or something like that, you might want to have access to this. And that brings me to the final option and the option that I personally like using, which is the portable standalone webcams. Now this gives you the best of both worlds because you get solid quality in 
a relatively cheap and small enough size for you to take with you wherever you go. However, the question arises, which one is good and what should you actually buy? Now, out of all the options out there, there's two webcams that kind of really stand out and are probably the most popular options online. One is the Insta360 Link and the other is the Obspot Tiny 2. Now, having used both of these extensively, here's what I've noticed. Firstly, sensor size. Now, remember how I mentioned earlier in the video that having a bigger sensor is usually better? Well, the Obspot is slightly bigger, coming in at 1 over 1 fifth inch CMOS sensor compared to the half inch sensor on the Insta360 Link. Now, this generally helps with sharper details and gives a more natural color tone to the video, as you can see here. Now, because the sensor size is bigger with the Obspot, it also takes in more light, which allows low light performance to be better as well on the Tiny 2 versus the Link. Another area that I wanted to test here was tracking. Now, this is a beneficial addition with going with a webcam like this because they also come with these like built-in gimbals, which will allow the camera to actually move and track you wherever you go. So you can see Opspot is like literally going wherever I go. Uh, it's doing a pretty good job. I move pretty quickly. Oh yeah, see it lost me. The moment I move like a little bit quickly, it loses me. It lost me again, like literally, it was like, I gotta put my face down here, okay. Like literally, I just, see, it lost me again. So if you're presenting things or if you're having a video call with family and you have kids and stuff, kind of moving around, I found that the tracking on the Tiny 2 actually works a little bit better than the Link. Another cool feature that the Tiny 2 has that the Link does not is voice control. Having voice control is actually pretty beneficial. Like I lent this out to my mom to use for some of her presentations and she found it very handy not needing to actually come close to the you know laptop and change the settings and stuff like that. And she could just use her voice to kind of tell the camera to do what she wanted it to. Along with this, both cameras do have gesture control as well. However, again, I did find that the Tiny 2 would be able to pick up my gestures a little bit better than the Link. Do uh, zoom in. You're supposed to zoom in. Why are you not zooming? Why it's not working? Overall, comparing both of these two, I did find that the Opspot Tiny 2 to have certain edges over the Link. However, where the Link does kind of fight back and things like size, I feel like the size of this is nice and small. Um, however, it's not like significantly smaller. And the reason why this is bigger is because it does have that larger sensor size. I also like that the Link has this monitor mount built right into it and I don't need a separate part for it. However, the magnetic clip with the Opspot does work pretty well. And I guess it does give a little bit more flexibility to people who may not want to have that monitor mount and just keep it separate. Overall, I think both of these are fantastic options. I just like certain things that the Opspot does. For example, like it also comes with this travel case with it where you can take it around with you because at the end of the day, I don't see these laptop webcams getting any better considering all the constraints laptop companies have to work with and camera sensor technology is just not going to have like this significant, you know, milestone change to it right now. So unfortunately, we're kind of stuck with having having to take these little webcams with us around if we really want to have the best quality. These kind of workarounds are our go-tos for the time being. But if you're interested in picking up this webcam, I will have it linked in the description down below. And until then, I will see you guys in one of these two videos over here.